What's going on guys? Matt with MotoWorks here. And I have the Thundercat up on the lift. There she is. We're actually gonna start to work on her today. Now what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try and start the bike. Now this bike hasn't been run for about a year, maybe two years is the last time I started this bike. And I think I drained the carburetors so, here's hoping I drain the carburetors and this bike starts up. <laughs> to get started on this bike, I have to first pull the gas tank off and none of this stuff's bolted down on this because when I stopped working on this, I kind of just left it as it was. Um, so, everything's kind of loosely on here. Now I gotta replace the fuel hose that goes to the gas tank and we'll go over that here in a minute but the very first thing I want to do is see if I did indeed drain the carburetors or not and that will really dictate how today goes. So again I'm going to pull the tank off and I'll get in there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now down in here these four things here are the carburetors for this bike. They're what deliver fuel to the engine uh, and one thing that you need to keep in mind when you're putting your bike away for storage you need to drain these. Now to drain those you just take a screwdriver or an allen socket whatever the drain screw is. If I did drain it there shouldn't be any fuel so hopefully we're good to go. So here's the drain screw I'm talking about. This little screw here the bottom part of the carburetor when I loosen this no fuel should drain out of there hopefully so we'll see open that up and as you can see there's no fuel draining out of there so that means that I must have done that which now I'm pretty relieved that I did that so this job this bike might actually start up that is fantastic news because I think this bike might actually start up today. All I have to do is get these wires routed properly for the battery. Uh, this had a different battery in it so I'd have to wire it up for the correct battery that I put in it. And then I just have to hook up the correct fuel line so that we could then put gas in the gas tank and see if this bike actually fires over. Boy, I sure hope it fires over. That'll save me a bunch of work. So, here's the hoping, guys. All right, so if you look at the fuel system that's on it right now, I did replace the fuel filter, but it looks like I might need to replace that again. The problem I had with this before is when I had the tank full of fuel, I would come back out the next day, and the floor would be completely covered in fuel because these hoses were are swollen and when gas would actually coat the inside of these hoses they would swell up enough that they would leak and as you can see they're not really held together the best they got um, it's kind of wire tied together if you can see that or safety wired together so I'm gonna show you what I did to solve this issue. Out and I bought all OEM fuel line. Now the reason why I bought all OEM is because the OEM stuff is actually made to a, a higher quality than some of that stuff you can get at the hardware store. And I think that's what the issue was on the old hoses. I think in some spots they used um, fuel hose that wasn't OEM or even if it was OEM, the OEM stuff should be replaced really every every four years. Um, and this bike is in 97, so um, what happens is, especially with ethanol fuels, it, the ethanol uh, fuel gets inside these hoses. And there is some type of a coating on the inside of this hose. And by pulling these on and off a bunch of times, you end up ripping that coating and that gas with the ethanol soaks into this rubber and makes it very pliable so that even if you do have it clamped down 
it still has a tendency of leaking and that's what I was running into on mine so I just said instead of going to the hardware store trying to make something work I just went the Yamaha got all this stuff it was pricey uh, I think it's worth it um, especially because this stuff is pre-bent it's really hard to do this with uh, regular hose uh, you end up kinking this fuel this fuel line and then you run into other issues down the road because of it so I'm gonna go ahead and install this stuff now and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like degree in I also have the fuel line from the fuel pump up to the carburetors in and on and if you're watching the video you see there's two hoses that I missed two rubber lines that I missed those are gonna probably be the ones that leak but right now they're not leaking I kind of just want to see if this runs I'm gonna end up buying those anyway but for now they didn't leak so I didn't order this I thought I did but I didn't so um, at a little bit of a standstill here, not really a standstill, but um, if you see, you look at this hose, you see it's not the same on both sides. So I got to figure out whether it mounts like this or if it mounts like this with this bend this way. Now, one of the useful tools I find is. A service manual is definitely going to be the best way to find out, but most people are watching a YouTube video right now to figure out how to work on, on their particular bike. So the best way i found to figure out how this stuff gets um, hooked up and, and back in place on the bike is I actually go to Bike Bandit or somewhere that has a parts fiche, uh, an actual picture of the part, and sometimes you gain a lot of knowledge just by looking at that. So that's a lot of times what I use to figure out how this stuff wires up. Obviously they're not the best pictures as you can see but um, it looks like from what the picture is showing the straighter 90 degree end actually goes on the fuel filter side and the bent 90 degree angle goes on the fuel pump side so I'm gonna put the fuel pump side on first and then when I drop the tank back down I'll hook the fuel filter side up then but that's how it looks to me and like I said those those are pretty useful and helpful um, so it's just a kind of quick tip for you guys there on where to find that information out so to help ease these uh, on there the tubes on I use a little bit of WD-40 um, just make sure you always put your clamp on there first your clip and then I just slide those on there it just makes it a little easier and these OEM clips are pretty cool actually once it's on there you just pull up on the clip itself there's a little holder it's holding it in place just pull up on that and then that's ready to go very trouble free so again like I said this is what it looked like in the picture I'm gonna come in drop the tank on there attach that final clip on there and we're gonna put a little bit of gas in this and see if she fires guys got me some lawnmower gas here and it's just to test it out see if she works can worry about high test gasoline later just got to get enough gas hooey that stinks oh man whatever's in there is stinky and now it starts to smell like gas again but we're gonna see She's either going to start, or we're back to the drawing board. Alright, there's the gas in it. Moment of truth. Fuel pump pumped up. So let's see what happens here.
Oh, battery died. Let's see the jump pad. figured out why I wasn't working. I wasn't getting gas at the carburetor and what I had to do is spray a little bit of WD into the fuel pump because the fuel pump was stuck. Old gas got in there and stuck it so put a little WD in there it helps lubricate that up. Now we should be able to fire this thing up. Back on track. Moment of truth time, got uh, one 4 amp charger hooked up to the battery, my battery went dead trying to start it, but here we go, if it doesn't start now then I guess the next video we have is going to be how to make this son of a gun start. close. I think we got a couple of issues going on here. Battery's kind of weak, so just wait till this battery charges up. Now it's, that's the way you mean. Well guys, I started to pack up for the night and I figured I'd give it one last try and well, this is what I got. some work. Alright, so the verdict is it does start so I know the ignition system works I know it's getting fuel. The carburetors are going to have to come off they need clean because it doesn't idle and I don't think it's running on all four cylinders uh, it doesn't sound like it is. But other than that we're at a good starting point. This is actually pretty good news uh, it did start, it did run uh, it, it's uh, definitely a process. I mean, with any project, you're you're gonna run into this stuff. So, I'm not really surprised that it it immediately died. I'm actually surprised that it started at all. So, that actually was really cool that it did actually end up starting. But uh, next video, looks like we're gonna be tearing the carburetors apart and figuring out why this thing won't idle and why it's only running on maybe three uh, and occasionally four cylinders. Uh, again, thank you guys for checking out the video. If you like the video, as always, leave a thumbs up. Uh, drop a comment below for any future videos you'd like to see uh, on, on this or other bikes that I have. Um, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for checking it out. See you in the next video.